Hi, welcome to Midwest Magic Cleaning. My name is and today we're going to be cleaning the living room of a level nine hoarder. There's a little bit of confusion about the stages versus levels of hoarding. Some people think that there's five levels. There's not. There's five stages of hoarding. And then there's nine levels of the actual hoard itself. This is a level nine in that there is biohazards. There's a ton of debris garbage, and a massive amount of clutter that makes their lives almost unlivable. Had we not been making progress in this and, and actually getting it cleaned up and making an effort, this could have very easily became a case where I would have had to report them to adult protective services. But as long as there's progress, then they typically stay out of it and let the people try to correct their own problems. This hoard has been going on for years. And I know that because in the kitchen, which if you haven't seen the first video, it'll be in a playlist with this one. There was expired food that went back typically to about 2020, which means that they bought their food sometime in 2019, most likely. And that would have been the last time where this place was thoroughly cleaned. The area that I'm working on right now is where they keep a bird. And that was what all that extra debris was. It was a combination of bird seed and bird poop. It's one of the reasons I'm wearing a mask is because that stuff can be really toxic, especially whenever you move it. That's also why I'm not spin kicking that off the table is because then it explodes into just a fine powder of molecules floating through the air and it can just destroy your lungs. And really my spin kicks can destroy your lungs anyway. I just don't want to add bird seed and bird poop to that as like ammunition because that's just how I roll son so suck it so I'm going to get the debris and the clutter off of these surfaces and then I'm going to use my APC to clean it down which is just 70% isopropyl alcohol and five or six drops of Dawn dish soap it's really good for sanitizing a common question I get is would 91% alcohol be better at sanitizing and the answer to that is idiot. No, seriously, it's it's not as good because it evaporates too quickly and the microbes actually are ingesting the water content of the alcohol, which is then attached to the alcohol itself. So they're ingesting alcohol along with the water, which then basically destroys them from the inside out, which is how I destroy most of my relationships with alcohol. hi -o! Once I get all that wiped down, then I can start putting some of the clutter back in at least some sort of organized method. A huge note here though, this is only step one of a much major cleaning. You're going to see cobwebs on the walls. You're going to see a massive amount of clutter that I couldn't get to on, for instance, their end tables. This was about getting all of the clutter that I could cleaned off of the floor and the furniture so that they could at least move around in here and have it clean enough to where they're not in danger. I was supposed to go back there this weekend, right now as I'm recording this actually, but I ended up pulling a muscle in my lower right back because I'm old. And so I'm having to put off going back to their house and getting the rest of this done. But hey, it gives us another video so you can just eat it. But yes, we will be going back here uh, to do more of this house, mainly to get all the clutter off their end tables, nightstands, and all the extra surfaces, get all the extra crap tubbed away. And then meanwhile, they have been going through all the tubs that I packed up and figuring out what to throw away and what to keep. And that is a major, major step that you don't normally get with horror especially one that's this severe. But she has been messaging me. She's been really proud, and I've been really proud of her for going through all that extra stuff and utilizing the dumpster while they still have it. She also told me that her husband has been keeping up with the dishes, and that is really cool, and I'm really proud of him too because both these people have pretty severe disabilities. If you didn't watch the first video, then you're a piece of crap. No, seriously. No, I'm just kidding. But I explained their disabilities in that video. A quick recap is she has been through several car accidents, several surgeries, including heart surgery. She's barely mobile. The husband has had two falls that were so severe that one fractured his skull and the other fractured his neck. And so movement is not a luxury that they have. You combine that with loss in the family, for instance, deaths in the family, and you attach that to a pre-existing hoarding disorder, which is a neuropsychological disorder, and that's where this kicks into overdrive and becomes a massive hoarding issue. It's why it bothers me when you get people who just call people like this lazy, because to me that's a 
childlike thinking. Actually understanding this disorder, you really get to know that laziness is often not a part of it. The neuropsychological factor that goes into this means that there is a physical neurological problem that has a psychological reaction. So saying that they should just get up and clean their house is like telling a depressed person that they should just smile more. It's a nonsensical piece of advice. You can't tell a person with a broken leg that they just need to start running and their leg will heal. It's a lot more complex than that. Now the reason that I'm wearing a Tyvek suit is because this place did have bed bugs. They weren't nearly as severe in this room, mainly the chair had the issue, but I didn't see him on anything else. But I wanted to be safe than sorry, so I wore the suit just in case. And that's something I could strip off before I get in my car and go home and just throw that right in the dumpster. I did try suplexing several bed bugs, and that did not help at all. They were they were far too tiny. Now, if you watched the first video in the kitchen, you knew that Thug was with me. That's Adrian, my daughter. I purposely made her skip the living room because I didn't have two Tyvek suits. And after looking all around in both my town and this one, I found that nobody was selling these and I didn't have time to order new ones off of Amazon. So I told her just to be safe, skip this, I'll do it myself. On my own, this took about, I would say 12 to 14 hours. It was split over two days. You'll see me on day two not wearing a Tyvek suit and that's because there just wasn't one available. And so I just cleaned it in regular clothes. And then whenever I got home, I stripped those off in the garage and immediately got those into the washer on a hot cycle. Then I dried all those on two hot cycles in the dryer, which is enough to kill any bed bug eggs or tiny little demonic insects. You'll see me putting a lot of small children's toys in a tub. There have been children in this house, but they are no longer of that age. So it looks like there have been toddlers in here. There, there haven't been toddlers in here in a long time. I will be honest, I'm not a fan of children coming into this house, which is one of the reasons that I continued cleaning it rather than saying, hey, you've got bed bugs, I'm not going to continue any further. But if there are kids, even if they're teenage, I don't want them coming into this house and having to deal with this. And I don't want to case where they just can't visit their relatives because the house is in such bad condition they can't physically get into it.
So there was some organization and thought behind what I'm doing here. I'm not just picking up stuff and throwing it into tubs and getting it out of the way. There was one tub that I put all the toys into, another one that I filled with a bunch of bags and craft supplies. There was one big tub that I filled with nothing but medical supplies. So she's diabetic, and I filled that with a bunch of her prepackaged needles, cotton swabs, disinfecting wipes, just a, a huge amount of medical supplies. At least that way it all gets put in the same place so that she's not having to search through five or six different tubs in order to find the thing she needs. And then I filled one tub with live barking wolves because I don't want wolves prowling around the house and snapping and biting at people. But if you keep them all in the same tub, then it becomes easy to where like, let's say somebody breaks in the house at night, they can easily figure out which tub the wolves are in and they can pop the top on it and just fling that at the intruder. And then the wolves, while flipping and snapping and biting through the air, become live ammunition and you've saved your house. But if I if I store the wolves in different tubs, then you got to figure out which one's in which, which one's the most aggressive. It becomes a huge pain in the butt. She has a huge amount of crafting supplies, and that's something that I find or have found in every single hoarder house that I've cleaned. For some reason, the creative part of the brain is super active in hoarders. Now, they do have two spare rooms. One is a computer room, and one is just a traditional spare bedroom that's not being used that are packed from wall to wall and about six feet high with just random stuff. Eventually, she wants to get all that stuff taken out and then turn one room into a crafting room. And I mentioned this in the last video that I can definitely do that and I could do that in a day. However, the hurdle is the actual hoard. It's going to be her getting past the disorder enough to where she can allow me to throw away, I'd say about 90% of everything that she owns so that we can then clean those rooms and then turn them, you know, one of them into a crafting room and the other one can be used as a proper storage room. But as of right now, you can't fit anything else into either of those rooms. 
I'll show you a small clip of that here in just a bit of me just trying to get into a room and I could barely fit through the doorway. I could only even step in there about a foot to a foot and a half, but you'll see that in a bit. So be patient. I'm not putting up with impatience, man. You'll notice as I get down deeper into these piles that there's a huge amount of cleaning products and disinfecting wipes. That's also something I find in every single hoarder house is an overload of cleaning supplies. So you know they want their house to be clean. You know that they know what it takes to get it clean, but the disorder just stops them cold. And so there's motivation in what you find in hoarding piles. You see motivation everywhere, but you don't see the follow through because of that brick wall that's set up in those frontal lobes of the brain. A lot of you have heard me explain this before, but there are two lobes in the front of the brain. One deals with emotional regulation and the other deals with heavy decision making. And it's almost like they're connected. The decision making part is pretty obvious. They can't make the decision to throw things away, but it's also active in other parts of their life. Uh, just making major decisions in their life becomes almost impossible. They need some help and usually an outside voice to make those decisions for them. Emotional regulation is a little bit less obvious, but if you watch the show Hoarders, you'll often notice that once they get so deep into the hoard, the person either gets extremely angry and starts doing outbursts or they like run away and say, well, I'm not dealing with it. You just make the decisions. That's my stuff, but I don't care. You deal with it. That is the fight or flight response kicking in. And those things often go hand in hand, the decision making and the emotional regulation. But the reason I'm bringing it up is because if you put them under a brain scan and they have, which is how we know this, those two areas of the brain show extremely diminished activity compared to the average person. And in some cases, they almost don't light up at all. That's the neuro part of the neuropsychological disorder. And that's why I say that it's a physical problem that you can't just defeat by saying you need to get up and clean your house. Hoarders can be trained to do that. It usually takes years because you're actually rewriting neural pathways and creating new neural pathways. But it takes several years of repetition and routine in order for them to get to that point. Typically, that means having to hire somebody to help them out or to coach them, as well as getting a therapist involved. Because the underlying issues that trigger this are anxiety and depression. That's the triggering factor. And that's why in almost every case in hoarding, you find that there's been a severe problem like a death in the family or a very nasty, terrible divorce or the loss of a very important career, some sort of traumatic loss that triggers the hoarding issues. Now you'll notice in this area that end table on the right is just completely cluttered and filled with stuff. That's one of the things I didn't get to. There's also a bookshelf in the back. That little white cheap plastic drawer set 
is another area where I did what I could with it. But that's what I was supposed to be doing today was taking all the stuff off of and out of those drawers and cabinets, cleaning the, all those up and then putting things back and storing the extras. But that's what I'll be doing whenever I go over there next. Again, my stupid old back prevented it because my back is old and stupid and, and also stupid and old. I won't turn this into an infomercial, but if you haven't hit subscribe yet, that would be super cool if you did because we're trying to get to a million subscribers and we're actually very, very close to a quarter of a million already. The channel's only been out for a little over a year. So even if you hate the channel and you're only watching this video out of pure accident, if you could accidentally hit the subscribe button, that would be ultra awesome. And if you hate me, if you hit the subscribe button, I will punch myself in my own neck. And that'll be your reward for, for subscribing. Now we're starting day two, and I know because I've got my heart heart fist bump shirt on. I sell those, by the way. I sell all kinds of shirts and mugs and stickers and stuff. You can find links to those in the bio, as well as link to the members only section where you get an extra video every week. And on day two, like I'd said before, I couldn't find Tyvek suits anywhere in my town or this town, so I just had to raw dog it, <laughs> and I just cleaned and hoped for the best and then like i said when i got home i just stripped all that stuff down and then heat treated the crap out of that i did still wear gloves and i did still wear a mask where appropriate which was through most of this cleaning Oh yeah, bags. That's another thing I run into constantly in every hoarder house. There's always a massive amount of bags. So I typically put all the bags inside of another larger bag so they can at least be all in the same place. Now you can see me working on the medical supply tub. Now here's the downside. You saw in the last video, if you weren't a devil worshiper and actually watched it, that I cleaned the kitchen and I had a couple of tubs left over for them to sort through, and they did sort through those too. But you saw how pretty that kitchen turned out to be. The downside here is that there's only one place I have to put all these packed tubs, and that's in the kitchen. And so by the time I was done with this, that kitchen, even though all these were stacked in the corner and out of their way, it was still re-hoarding the kitchen just to get these out of the living room. So I'm hoping that they were able to go through a whole bunch of these tubs and get rid of a whole bunch more stuff because they do not have the room to put this anywhere. And if they put it back in the living room, they're just hoarding still except just a little bit more tightly packed so instead of stuff just laying out everywhere in piles it's all neatly packed away in tubs we, we don't want that for them we need this stuff to disappear
this area was mostly books, which helped me out quite a bit because I had a book tub. She had what I would assume to be every single Danielle Steele novel ever written in hardback. And then there was a bunch of children's books. I was not going to separate out child's books from Danielle Steele. So they all just went in the same tub. That sucker ended up about 200 pounds, but I just picked it up with two fingers because that's how strong I am. And then I just flicked it into the kitchen. But once I got through that pile and got that tub all packed up, this area was a whole lot easier to clean because then it was just a matter of random stuff, just cords and bird food and gloves and some old jackets and a backpack. Just completely random stuff crammed into that little nook below that organ or that keyboard. This is also one of those areas that is very difficult to explain to a hoarder. So they have a massive amount of Cardinals memorabilia and you can tell they love them and they just buy almost everything that's got the word Cardinals on it. Anytime you have a collection, a true collection like that, you're not doing it any justice by just letting it sit under piles of stuff. That's why I would like to have a room that is her craft room that we can hang up the Cardinals memorabilia or put it on shelves because the thought process changes whenever you have these displayed. If you have them displayed, any collection at all, you're honoring that collection and you're being proud of it by displaying it. If you have it just shoved into piles waiting for a place to go, then you're having a collection just to have it. There's no purpose to it. You just own the stuff and you'll never see it. If we could get that computer room cleaned out and we can get all of her crafting stuff put in it and then display the Cardinals memorabilia, then there's actual value to the collection, for them at least. This is the hallway, and this was very dangerous. There were not only tripping hazards everywhere, even on top of the fire hazard that already existed, but there were some needles down here on the floor. There was just mounds of trash. And remember, there's mobility issues here. So they're having to climb on this in order to get back to their bedroom, which is down at the end of the hallway. I'm really, really surprised that there haven't been more injuries in this house just because of the sheer amount of stuff out in their walking paths. Now, a lot of people ask me why I don't just get a carpet rake and a shovel, and that's because I always find things of actual value in these piles. 
I found everything from, well, even in this house, I found multiple credit cards. In other houses, I found life insurance policies that were still active. I found birth certificates and social security cards. I found jewelry. There's always items of value in these piles of garbage. So I go through them all. In fact, whenever I was cleaning this up, I found several pictures that were so old. They were from like the 1940s. I think I found one that would have been from the early 1900s. We're talking 1920s. Again, just lying in piles of other paperwork. Here's that spare room I was talking about that is stored. I'll show you a picture of that in the middle here because you can't even see into the room. I started to pull things out and then I told her, hey, I need you to come here and look at this. The only way we're doing anything with this room is if you're prepared for me to throw away 90% of it. She wasn't quite ready for that yet because she needs to sit there and go through each tub. So we put that off and that's going to be its own separate project. What we'll do whenever we get to that point is I'll have her sit down on her chair, her recliner, and I will bring her in one box and one tub at a time. Have her thumb through it and anything that can go out into the dumpster will go out into the dumpster. Now there's another thing I get asked a lot. Did you pull out the recliners and the couch and the furniture and clean under them? I did not. I have a bad back. We can pull those out later. Right now, the only thing I'm concerned about is level one cleaning, which is getting everything out of the middle of the floor so they can walk. Whenever we get into level two cleaning, which will be all the end stands and surfaces and bookshelves, then I can have somebody come with me and they can pull the chairs out. I can get the stuff under them and get that on level two. Level three, I would consider to be polish cleaning, where I start to put on things like furniture polish and actually brushing out the live wolves that are in the tub so that they look pretty and their hair is gorgeous. But right now it's more about safety and being able to walk through their house without tripping. Members, I will see you this Wednesday for your extra fly video, dope video, whatever the kids say now, bussin, boopity floopity video. Anyway, and everybody else, I will see you on Saturday. Later.